For over 21 years, the Champaign-Urbana Theater Company has played a key role in bringing quality theater to the community and preserving the historic Virginia Theater in downtown Champaign. Today you will meet two people who are leaders and artists in CUTC and a vital part of strong local theater in Champaign-Urbana. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the work of Michael Galloway and Jeff Dare. Hi, welcome to Art Now, a program where we talk to artists whose work is part of our community. I'm Greg Chu and I'll be your host. Our guests today are Mike Galloway and Jeff Dare. Michael came to our community from the Cadillac Footlighters Theatre Company where he acted and directed and was executive director. He is now the managing director for the Champaign-Urbana Theatre Company. Jeff Dare was Harold Hill in last year's production of The Music Man and is directing CUTC's upcoming production of Avenue Q. Jeff has a degree in choral music education from the University of Illinois and has taught music in our area for the past six years. Jeff also has experience as choral director at Champaign Central High School and Metamora Township High School. So, welcome to Art Now. His resume is longer <laughs> than mine. Can you do that? <laughs> he made me look smaller. <laughs> Okay, well, now that we've gotten through the obligatory, <laughs> uh, um, I, Michael, thank you yeah. for being here on Art Now today, and uh, let's start thank at you. the beginning. All right. Uh, how did you find yourself in the business of managing a theater group? For my first time or here? Um, in your general? Choice. All right, well, I've been involved in pretty much theater and the arts all my life. I started in third grade with the Garden of Old City, the Wizard of Oz, and from there I kind of got the bug and grew up. Uh, um, the Saturday Night Live and John Belushi, so the mm -hmm. acting bug got me, and I was on stage all the time as much as I could be. And then it came to a point where I kind of wanted to try my hand at directing, so I started directing musicals back in Michigan, and it went from directing to producing to creating the uh, position of executive director. And I kind of just I like the behind the scenes, I like the creating, and I, I like doing that. And instead of having to learn all the lines, you know, mm -hmm. I, I the other end, and uh, I was online one day looking and this job I saw open and I'm from Illinois originally so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to bring the family here and and come back kind of home and I got it and I'll be here four years in August and I'm um, having a blast. Well we're really fortunate to have you here. Thank you. Um, what do you like about the theater scene in the, tween, in the Twin Cities? Oh man, um, I th what I like is I'm not biased of our theater company. I love mm -hmm. theater in general. Uh, I'm a member of the American Association Community Theater, so I like going to all different different places. I like there's so much art in this community. I mean, no matter what you do, sometimes it's the same night, uh, but there's so much art. You can see a show pretty much anywhere, live or, or anything. And I just, I love how everything is just one area and you can go see different things. And a lot of it's family friendly and I have kids. So it's nice to know I can plan a weekend if we want to go do something and, and there's art everywhere to be had. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Um, what are some of the challenges you met uh, with managing CUTC here? They in said your never first to look at the years. camera unless I had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the arts, I came from Michigan, which uh, the arts were not funded as well. And I went from Michigan to Illinois, which is almost as, as bad. And the, the arts were one of the last things to get funded. The mm -hmm. grants are not there as much as they used to be. And the, the challenges are really keeping the keeping the doors open keeping the money coming in to keep us going and uh among all the other art groups that are still trying to vie for for income and uh it's 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 a challenge um that's a big one uh i think juggling i mean you know i i'm i will say and i don't think anybody will disagree that i'm i'm not one for very well planning you know i mean you can't see my desk, but I know where everything's at. <laughs> um, but it's, it's it's a challenge of, uh, like right now, actually, as this goes to air, I'm closing the producers. We're running Avenue Q. Millie, our, our 30 Modern Millie, our student productions, um, just our rehearsal and cast. And I'm already having pre-production meetings with our Legally Blonde team. On top of doing day-to-day -day operations and all the shows, it's, it's quite a challenge to remember where everything is. 
and what's going on. So there's there's some challenges there too. But like I said, I wouldn't have mm -hmm. any other way. It's you know. Well, it's you've fun. been in your new facility here now for about a year. Yeah. Um, uh, what are the benefits of your new home here? Uh, the benefits are, are great because before anybody that knows CUTC, uh, when we were downtown on Main Street, it would be our, our administrative offices, our costumes, and our rehearsal. And then our scene shop would be all on, on High Cross Road. Mm -hmm. So if the director, <clears throat> if Jeff wanted to see the set, say, he'd have to drive all the way on the other side of you know, Champaign <clears throat> to see the set. And then of course, when we're done and everything's ready, the set gets built, it gets taken to Parkland. Uh, the costumes and the pieces here, or downtown got taken to Parkland. Mm -hmm. So it was like a mess. Um, now, costumes are here. The set is right behind those doors behind us. Um, so the sets are being built as we're rehearsing. The costumes are all here. The props are all here. Everything's in one location except obviously our performance. And it's wonderful to have everything in one spot. Um, we're still kind of hidden. Uh, we're, we're working on signage for the front so mm -hmm. people don't drive by and not know where we're at. But, uh, you know, little baby steps. But the place before, we, we really did a number on creating the wood floor and we put all this in and we're putting walls up and we're still work in progress. But mm -hmm. uh, in the year we've been here, it's, it's kind of nice. It, I mean, I can still use some more room. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we use like uh, our boardroom for, changes, yeah, I remember they're dancing down here, our boardroom turns into the music room upstairs and mm -hmm. everything, and our hallway during the producers, they block scenes, so mm -hmm. we use every aspect of the building that we can, but yeah. um, it's, it's kind of, I, I, I do like it, it's really nice. At least they don't play basketball in not yet. Your rehearsal stage not, or not anything yet. like that. <laughs> don't give so. me any ideas, I was just thinking about that, there mm -hmm. could be some hoops, yeah. uh, <laughs> downtime, but the, yeah. <laughs> well, um. You mentioned uh, some great productions coming up. Um, how does CUTC select their upcoming productions? Do they pick a director and then select the shows? Or if I said rock, paper, person? scissors, would you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of a process. Mm -hmm. um, we have a season planning committee. Mm -hmm. um, the committee meets. We, we throw a bunch of shows in the hat. Like this year, for instance, we had our um, award-winning season. It was our um, Tony award-winning season, but uh, we had to switch some shows around so um, all the shows this year have won Drama Desk, Obi, or Tony Awards mm -hmm. and we we kind of threw a whole bunch of shows in the hat and we were looking at them and and you know we have to look at size of orchestra we have to look at size of cast costumes there's a lot of different things to check so two or three months it could go longer to decide finally what the shows are so once we decide the shows we get those approved by the board mm -hmm. once that's done then we send out a call to directors, uh, music directors, and choreographers, the, the, the main three. And then the committee looks them over, we interview each of them, and we hire that. And from there, then the rest of the staff gets hired from the main staff. And it's quite a process. I mean, like I said, uh, Legally Blonde's not until August, the auditions are in June. They started, as soon as we started mentioning the shows last year in October, November, the director already started working on stuff for designs and everything. So um, it's quite a project for yeah. each show. Well, you certainly have a, a wide variety of audiences here in the community, yeah. and it looks like you serve serve the community very well. Well, this year's kind of this year's kind of different. We did a lot of newer shows. Last year's our 20th anniversary, so we did a lot of older shows. Mm -hmm. This year, we tried to test the waters and check some of our newer shows. And mm -hmm. so far, I mean, we've got some really good uh, reviews and some thumbs up from the shows we picked this year. So, kudos to our season planning committee; they did a really good job. Well, and and kudos to you for keeping it all in the air and. <laughs> Uh, it is quite a juggling act. It, <laughs> it is. certainly sounds like it. Uh, well, um, you have an upcoming production of Avenue Q, yes, so we do. let's bring Jeff Dare, the director of Avenue Q, into the conversation. Um, Jeff, welcome to Art Now. Um, I noticed that as part of your background and your resume, you were an Eagle Scout, and uh, or you are an Eagle Scout. I think once an Eagle Scout, that's a lifetime. So that's uh, how the saying goes. Badge. <laughs> um, I've had several Eagle Scouts that were really important parts of uh, the theater program I ran for 35 years uh, at Urbana High School. How did scouting help prepare you for uh, your music and theater career? Well, we never did really did a lot of theater or music stuff in my scout troop when I was growing up, but we did cover a lot of the leadership aspect of working with other people and, uh, you know, the, the best way to work in groups, work on teams, and uh, I, I think my background in scouting has really helped me prepare for thinking about the logistics of the overall production, mm -hmm. when people go where, that sort of thing. 
Yeah, I, I found an Eagle Scout was always the guy that could tie the right knot for the right occasion yeah, as right. well. Uh, uh, we had less scenery falling off the <laughs> <laughs> scaffolding that way. Um, uh, Jeff, one of the creators of Avenue Q uh, says that he asked himself, uh, what can we write that people our age would actually like and would want to see and not have to be dragged to? Um, this is not a show for children, is it? <laughs> no. No, it's not. And, and in fact, on, on all, our, um, all our advertising, we have a big old rated R because our show contains foul language and puppet nudity and that's and that's very true um, the the creators when they first started working on Avenue Q um, decided that uh, audiences were kind of turned off these days by people who just burst into song randomly they don't they don't like that it kind of turns them off um, you know we have uh, these days we have sh shows like Glee on TV and I can tell you probably uh, a lot of people that I talk to don't like Glee just because it's uh, these people burst into song and it doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't break out in the song <laughs> dancing in the parking lot? Well, I do, but I do musical theater. <laughs> and, and 20 people behind you do the same thing? That's right. <laughs> Um, um, so, so when they were figuring out what can we do to, to capture the imagination of the people that uh, get turned off by that kind of thing, they thought back to their childhood. They thought back to the TV shows specifically of their childhood. Things like Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, all these shows had a lot of puppetry involved and kids really believed that these puppets could burst into song no matter when. It's kind of an, an accepted rule of seeing puppets anywhere is that puppets can burst into song whenever they feel like. So they used that concept, but instead of dealing with problems like um, what does what sound does the letter T make? Or, or um, you know, what uh, what do I do if I have a disagreement with my friend? Instead of dealing with those problems, Avenue Q takes that concept and flips it on its side. Now we're dealing with grown-up problems. Mm -hmm. Things like what's my purpose in life? Things mm -hmm. like um, what do I do if I'm gay? What if no one likes me? What if I can't get a job? That sort of thing. Okay, and so these are. This is a play that uh, people can turn to for answers. That um, maybe you know, as kids, they might turn to adults for. And now they're talking to each other. Exactly. That's that's the idea. We can we can deal with some very real life problems in a way that is very practical, but at the same time is really funny. Mm -hmm. and that's the idea. Well, uh, with, uh, the songs are very catchy in the yeah. show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I, was, uh, I sat in on a rehearsal last week, and then you know, I had to banish it from my head after 24 hours. <laughs> but um, what are some of the themes that would relate to a 20-something audience that show up in some of the songs? All right, so um, I know a lot of folks from my generation, people that are either fresh out of college or maybe just a couple years after that, are a lot of us are really struggling with finding the right career path and that's mm -hmm. a, a problem that almost all of our actors struggle with and all of our characters in our mm -hmm. show struggle with um, also finding love finding the the right person to spend your life with and not messing up when you get a good thing going <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like good advice for 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 uh all ages as well, yeah. except for those young ones, which we've already established. <laughs> can't come. Can I come to the show? Um, uh, Jeff, I know you've uh, taught improvisation. Uh, how, how do you use improvisation in your directing? I like to, I mean, every director loves casting um, actors who are really, really talented. Uh, we were fortunate enough with this show that we got a lot of really great talent. And that affords me as the director the opportunity to, to say to them, okay guys, here's the scene, let's talk about what your characters are feeling at this moment, and then you can decide what that means for what your character's doing in terms of movement, in terms of expression, that sort of thing. So they really are, we almost uh, practically improvised the entire show in a way. I was there, you know, kind of guiding the process along, as was uh, we, have a, we have a very special guy on our staff uh, whose name is Ray Essick. He's our puppetographer, he's our puppet coach. 
Um, puppet coach sounds good. Yeah, he, he mm -hmm. works, he works uh, really closely with all our puppeteers to make sure their expressions look right and they make sure our puppets don't look like they have broken necks when they're talking to each other. Um, so we're, we're, we're watching all the time to make sure things look right out in the audience. And then, uh, and, but the actors really have the, it's their job first to make sure that things look right. And they do that mostly through improvisation. Oh, terrific, yeah. Um, some of the puppets have two manipulators and some have one. Um, how does that serve the characters created by the <laughs> actors? That's so. right. So we have, we have two kind of puppets in our show. We have what's called a rod arm puppet, which is, act, uh, which is puppeteered by one single person. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have their, their one hand is inside the puppet's head, operating the mouth for lip syncing purposes. Mm -hmm. And then the other hand is holding onto a stick that's attached to the puppet's arm. And they kind of lead the puppet's arm around wherever they go so they can make gestures, that sort of thing. Um, then we've got live hand puppets that require two puppeteers, like you said. The, um, so one puppeteer has his hand in, and then his other hand is inside a glove that is the puppet's hand. And then there's another person on the other side of the puppet with his or her hand inside the other side of the glove. So with those three arms, they operate the head and the two arms of the puppet. Um, when the creators were, were first working on the show, they decided that they really wanted um, some of the lonelier characters, the characters that are still looking for someone in their life to be rod arm puppets because they only require one person to operate, and it makes sense that that person is a little more by themselves. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then we have characters that are a little more confident in who they are. They're more confident around other people. Those are the live hand puppets with two puppeteers because it's a little more cozy. You get a little more social feeling from, from looking at that. Uh, from that clump of puppet and human. Yeah, so they harbor multitudes. Uh, <laughs> That's right. the, and, I, and I suppose if you have a love scene, it makes more sense with the rod puppets where you don't have a big crowd of people That's hanging scene. around That's the love scene. Yeah. <laughs> is, that the, is that the right term? Love scene, well, okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the term. <laughs> um, well, Avenue Q also broke some new ground by not hiding the... Uh, actors that uh, manipulate the puppets. Um, there's no ventriloquism, there's no man behind the curtain. Um, why do you think that works so well? The, um, when, they, when they first started writing the show, and, and when you write Broadway shows, you do workshops, mm -hmm. which is where you kind of show, show off your work in progress to uh, investors and people in the business to kind of show them what you're working on and uh, so that they can, you know, give the show money and, and uh, see how the show is going. And when they were doing the work, they had originally planned to do all the puppeteering behind, you know, flats or, or other things to hide the puppeteers and just show off the puppets. Um, but during the workshops, they didn't have the chance to build all that scenery. Mm -hmm. And so the audience could see the puppeteers just fine. And the more that the directors and the creators thought about it, the more that they liked that setup. They liked being able to see both the expression on the puppet's face, even though the puppet is, has a neutral face and can't, its eyebrows don't operate, it mm -hmm. can't smile or frown. Um, but they, they also get to see the actor's face. The actor can be more expressive. So the audience kind of, it, takes, it, it actually takes a little training for the audience uh, at first to be able to watch both the puppet and the puppeteer, but you get used to it after a couple minutes, and it makes a lot of sense, and it's really fun. Yeah, they just sort of meld together then That's after right. time, yeah. Um, well, you mentioned the set. Um, I would think that having a set that people have to move around on and also has to, you have to have interiors with puppets in their rooms and so on, that must be a challenging sort of set to have to design. It is a challenging set to design, which is which is why we didn't design that it ourselves. Why we didn't design it. <laughs> we, uh, it was somebody else. We had a we had a really great um, uh, opportunity to to rent our set from folks, some folks up in Wisconsin, uh, and it's it's a really superb set. The yeah. details are excellent. We're we're really lucky to have it. Mm -hmm. We had one group in Kenosha had the set, and one group in Shorewood had the puppets. And wife and I went up, grabbed a U-Haul, and grabbed it all in one spot and brought it down. 
And it's all in the scene shop. It was and, like it was like Christmas Day when this yeah. truck showed up oh, with all these puppets. Oh, you've seen the cast. And... We opened up the back end of this U-Haul, and everybody's out in the garage going, "Woo!" Oh, yeah. and all the puppets. <laughs> now, if you want to touch them, you got to help unload it. So <laughs> now it's all unloaded, and, and it's out in the scene shop, spread out. And we're the, the crew this week is mm -hmm. looking at how we're going to piece things together. And we only had to build two pieces, actually set pieces. So those are being done right now. So it's well, the show's a visual feast. Uh, certainly, the puppets are, are very charming and a lot of fun, and they come to life immediately. It's yeah. uh, it, it's really quite an experience. Um, who are uh, some of the characters we'll meet in Avenue Q? Well, the the story kind of revolves around Princeton, who's this kid who's fresh out of college. He's got a degree in English, and he realizes that you can't really do anything with a degree in English. There are no useful jobs that you can take right out of college oh. with a BA in English. Oh, welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he eventually tries to find an apartment in New York so that he can find a job and kind of figure out what he's supposed to do with his life. And uh, the apartment that he finds happens to be on Avenue Q. Mm -hmm. He started at Avenue A, but those apartments were too expensive, so he worked his way down the alphabet until he got to Q. Um, there he meets a lot of cool characters. Um, not all of the characters in the show are puppets. Some mm -hmm. of them are human, just like you would see on, uh, on some of the TV shows from our past. Mm -hmm. um, the, there are characters like uh, Kate Monster, who is, uh, she is a teacher's aide, but she wants to be something more. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a, an investment banker and a Republican who's kind of in the closet about his, uh, his identity. Um, you have a, a slacker who really wants to find his place in life. You have a, a guy who's basically a, a hermit, just lives in his apartment all the time and uh, doesn't really do anything useful with his life. Um, you have... Uh, um, you have... Just a, behind you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on. Got <laughs> Right, okay, yeah. got Trekkie. Uh, we have, we have a, a character called Lucy the Slut, which, who you'll meet. She's, um, her purpose is kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> she serves... Mature audiences. <laughs> That's right. She, um, she kind of provides the, the third point of the love triangle. Um, we, have, we, have, we have these two uh, cute little bears behind me, the pink and, and purple wait, pink and blue ones, mm -hmm. that um, they're kind of like Princeton's conscience, if you can imagine a little, like an angel and devil that pop up over, over his shoulder, mm -hmm. only they're both devils. They're, uh. they're cute and cuddly, and they have, are full of nothing but bad ideas okay. for Princeton. And hence the bad idea bear. Exactly. So, okay, yes. Well, they're, they're a lot of fun in the show. As yeah, they well. are. Uh, gi giving invariably bad advice. <laughs> Uh, like like that best friend of yours who suggests you can have one more beer before yeah. you leave or yeah. something like that. <laughs> um, well, you've uh, prepared a number to share for us, and uh, would you like to introduce that for us? Sure. Um, we're going to be listening to If You Were Gay, and uh, this is a scene between two characters who share an apartment together, and um, Nikki, who is the, uh, the character, the green character you'll see with... Uh, two live hands, two, two operators. Um, he's uh, trying to tell his friend Rod, who's a very kind of uptight guy, that uh, if he were gay, it would be fine with him because, you know, he would, he, he'd be his friend anyway. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the whole point of this song. <laughs> okay, well, I, uh, we're looking forward to seeing it. All right. Ah, an afternoon alone with my favorite book, Broadway musicals of the 1940s. No roommate to bother me. How can it get any better than this? <sighs> oh, hi, Rod. Hi, Nikki. Hey, Rod, you'll never guess what happened to me on the subway this morning. This guy was smiling at me and talking to me. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, he was being real friendly, and I think that he might have been coming on to me. I think that he might have thought that I was gay. <clears throat> so, uh, why are you telling me this? Why should I care? I don't care. What'd you have for lunch today? Well, Rob, there's no need to get defensive. I'm not getting defensive! Look, 
Why do I care about some gay guy you met? I'm trying to read. Well, I didn't mean anything by it, Rod. I just think it's something that we should be able to talk about. Well, I do not want to talk about it, Nikki. This conversation is over. But Rod! Over! Well, okay, but just so you know, if you were gay, that'd be okay. I mean, cuz hey, I like you anyway, because you see, if it were me, I would feel free to say that I was gay, but I'm not gay. Nikki, please, I am trying to read this book. If you were queer, oh. I'd still be here Nikki. year Nikki, after please, year I'm this book. because yeah. you're dear yeah. to me, and I know that you what would accept me too. I would if I told you today. Hey, guess what? I'm gay, oh. but I'm not gay. I'm happy just being with you. Ooh, high button shoes, it's pal Joey. So what should it matter to me? What you do in bed with guys? Nikki, that is gross! Uh, if you were gay, ah! I'd shout, hooray! Oh, and me. here I'd stay, la, 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 la. but I wouldn't get oh, in your go. way. You can count on me to always be beside you every day to tell you it's okay you were just born that way and as they say it's in your dna you're gay i am not gay if you were gay ah! well once again avenue q the musical opens at parkland theater on thursday may 17th at 7 30. it runs through sunday may 20th uh, how can we get tickets you can go online at uh, www.cutc.org, or you can call our uh, box office, 217-344-3884. Terrific, and uh, you'll want to do that. Because Get them this quick. Is, this is a show <laughs> not to be missed. It's a, it's a special edition to your season, yeah, I believe. We, we, did, uh, we usually do four shows in our season, and because of the content of this show, we didn't want to add it to our season ticket holders. Just We didn't want to upset them, we figured. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we kind of created a CUTC Extra which we're going to start doing from here on out is just a one weekend, smaller show, and it's just outside of the box kind of thing. And uh, tickets are selling, um, which is great. Yeah. So, Well, it, it, it's a show that's still running in New York yeah. uh, years after it won all kinds of Tony Awards. So yeah. uh, make sure you catch it. Uh, and uh, you can learn more about the production, uh, as Michael said, at the website www.cutc.org. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed today's show, and we hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make it your own Art Now. Thanks for watching Art Now. I want to thank again our guests. That would be Champaign-Urbana Theater Company manager Michael Galloway and Jeff Dare, the director of the upcoming production of Avenue Q, the musical. <laughs>